Hello everyone. In this video, we will cover how to import STL files, create, or delete duplicates in the Prusa Slicer software, to be used with the Prusa 3D printers. We will also cover how to change your view, move, rotate and scale the part on the print bed. Select the correct printer available to you. Selecting the printer will automatically change the print bed in the Prusa Slicer. Click Add to select an STL file and click Open. The part will be loaded into the software into the 3D editor view. You can rotate the view by holding the left mouse button down. You can pan the view by holding the right mouse button or scroll wheel down. You can also zoom in or out by scrolling the scroll wheel. You can change the view by clicking on View, then any of the following views. Alternatively, you can press any keys from 0 to 6 on your keyboard to change the view. Number 1 key shows the top view. Number 2 key shows the bottom view. Number 3 key shows the front view. Number 4 key shows the back view. Number 5 key shows the left view. Number 6 key shows the right view. Number 0 key shows the isometric view. Clicking on the empty space deselects the part. Clicking on the part selects it. When the part is selected, all the shortcuts on the left side and top will be made available. When the part is deselected, the shortcuts are grayed out. Additional STL files can be imported in by using the Add shortcut. By default, all imported STL files will be loaded in the center of the print bed. Notice these are two separate parts. Click on Arrange to space out the parts automatically. The parts will be arranged to the center of the print bed and to have sufficient space in between them. The parts will also be aligned to the top of the print bed. Click on Add Instance to create exact copies of the parts. These instances will always have the same orientation and properties. Each instance can be identified in the parts list on the right side. Click on Remove Instance to delete the instances. Click on Delete to delete the part. The part can be moved by selecting it and dragging it by holding down the left mouse button. However, depending on the view, moving the part in this method may move the part outside of the print bed. When the part is outside of the print bed, it turns blue and a warning appears. If the part is not fully inside the print bed, it will not be green in color. Thus, it is best to use the arrange function. The best way to move a part is to use the move function. While the part is selected, click move. The X, Y, and Z axis arrows will appear on the part. Click and drag the arrow head to move the part along the selected axis. The part can be moved to an exact location on the print bed by keying in the coordinates on the object manipulation. This moves the part's center point to the coordinates. If the position coordinates are all zero, the part's center point will be at the zero point of the print bed, which is at the bottom left corner. The zero point is denoted with the three arrows. Parts cannot be placed floating above the print bed. It will automatically be brought to the top of the print bed. To rotate the part, click Rotate while the part is selected. Three rotational axes will appear on the part. Click and drag the arrow head to rotate the part about the selected axis. To rotate the part in increments of 45 degrees, click and drag the arrow head to the lines shown in the center of the circle. This will snap the part to the selected angle. To reset the rotation angle, click on Reset Rotation. To orientate a part surface directly to the print bed, click on Place on Face while the part is selected. This function will highlight flat surfaces or segments, which can be selected. 
Once the surface is selected, the part orientation will change to place the selected surface on the print bed. This is useful, as there's no need to rotate the part accurately. Other segments can be selected if needed. Sometimes, place on face, followed by rotate can be used together to get a desired part orientation. In this case, to orient the part upwards, the top was placed face down, using place on face, then the part was rotated, using rotate. Click scale, while the part is selected, to scale the part in a specific axis, or scale proportionally. Selecting the corners will scale the part proportionally. Selecting the ends on the axis will stretch or compress the part along the axis. To reset the scale, click on Reset Scale. Besides using the Move, Scale, and Rotate functions, the part can be manipulated using the Object Manipulation window. Here, the part can be moved, rotated, and scaled in a specific axis. The arrows indicate the positive directions. The scale factor can be unlocked to prevent proportional scaling. As the part is in millimeters, do not check inches. It is good practice to check the size of the part and ensure there are no errors. If the part is too big, the print time will be extensive. If there are errors, the print will fail. Other functions include cut, paint on supports, and seam painting. These functions are for advanced users. To create multiple copies of a part, copy and paste can be used. Split to objects, split to parts, search, and variable layer height are for advanced users. You can also undo or redo any actions if necessary. This covers the basics on importing a part and orienting it in the 3D editor view. Speak to your lecturer if you require assistance in printing.